That neighbor might be looking for something. <laughs> <laughs> it does have to be oh, I, 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 I can oh, just okay. go back myself. I like that one. Or that, absolutely. Sorry, yeah. Tiffany corrected me. That is not okay. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amouge bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 45 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and Mas Por Favor is a hidden gem in the valley. Next, we'll talk with our guest, Tiffany King, about the College 529 program. And finally, for your future self, we'll share a free tool that maps out what you need for college financing. Each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. This week, we are sharing a new favorite, Mas Por Favor Tequeria y Tequila, which translates to more please, taco shop, and tequila. <laughs> you did that pretty well, Crystal. Thank Good you. job. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I practice uh, a lot. <laughs> any place named more please, I think I'll yes. probably like. So excited to hear that. <laughs> so in your intro, Shannon, you mentioned that it was a hidden gem, and it literally was. Um, <laughs> the location itself, it's like where there's like a lot of hip, like young, up-and-coming restaurants. What I part guess. of town did you it's say? It's in Chinatown. Chinatown. So it's oh. right there, like off of Jones and like Warm Springs, it's a strip mall of like Asian cuisine. Um, you've got the Jones and Warm Springs. Yeah, I think that's the street. No, no, Maybe it's so. Valley View. Yeah, probably yeah. Valley View. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a bunch of things there. And then there's it's a taco shop. Like if you think of like a Roberto's and you walk in and it's nothing fancy. It's a couple of tables. There's a, you know, the counter. You see the guys back there cooking. They're all just, they're doing their thing, and mm-hmm. it's a taco shop. Well, if you say the magic words, which I will share in just a moment, <laughs> you get lit in, lit, led down this um, tunnel, and it's a literal, like, tunnel. Like, you wouldn't even, like, you wouldn't know from just walking into this place. If you don't say it, you, you would never know. Okay. But you get led down this tunnel, and um, when we share the post, you're going go to go go to our social media. You'll see a, a post of the lighted up room. They lit it up for Christmas. Um, but you go down this tunnel, and then you're lit into this back area where it's like um i guess like a street uh mexican very authentic things on the wall things in the back counter the music is like it's bumping back Mm -hmm. there like it's so how did you know the secret password um uh, my friend knew it so my friend are we allowed to tell all the people (laughs) (laughs) i think you can okay if you go into the website which i'm going to talk to you about a little bit they've got like a bunch of blogs and the blog they tell you what to say to get led back. But if you just wandered off the street, you would think it was just like a Roberto's. Let me Mm -hmm. order some tacos, eat, and get out of here. But no, you want to hang around, say the secret words, go to the back, and then you can experience the thing. So I went during the holidays, and so they were having um, a Nightmare Before Christmas um, special. And so we had to make reservations in advance, and that's definitely going to be my recommendation. Make your reservations um, so you can actually sit down and get served a plate in order and everything if you don't have reservations you can still go back but you have to go to like the bar and just order a drink Mm and go so from the website um before we went you know i'm like well what are we going to order blah blah blah. i discovered that it's more than just a menu or their history they've actually got blogs on the website which is like the first time i've seen a restaurant Mm -hmm. with blogs but they um give like a lot of information on the mission of the restaurant ordering tips ways to get rewards one of the blogs in particular that kind of stood out to me it said mas por favor tequila tequila is creating a space for the future of las vegas our customers want what's new what's happening and since 2020 mas por favor tequila tequila has been serving just that and and that's what i felt like it was like i've discovered something new i'm in with the in crowd <laughs> like oh yeah <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Um, when I was there, um, as as you've seen kind of my progression from the other podcast, I've been taking a lot of risks mm-hmm. uh, with my food choices. We're very so. proud of you for your... Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the hostess mm-hmm. uh, what her recommendations were, and what she recommended was the shrimp taco bowl, which were mm. Cajun shrimp um, served with cilantro, black beans, cabbage, carrots, you can also choose what kind of style that you want the the bowl to be created in. So the styles were gringo, walk it out, and movie caliente. (laughs) (laughs) 
So Gringo was like, what'd you get? (laughs) (laughs) I got the traditional style, which was um, the one that included like the cilantro with the cabbage and everything like that. Um, The Gringo was like lettuce and tomatoes. Um, Walk It Out was um, kind of like an Asian um, fusion into it. Okay. And then the Muy Caliente was hot. Obviously hot. (laughs) Um, ordered a side of chips and guacamole because the shrimp taco bowl, I will, this is my advice. The portions are small. Plan to order multiple things. It's kind of like um, tapas Mm -hmm. in a way. Okay. Um, And then um, because it was the night before Christmas special, they had a night before Christmas menu, I ordered the Sally Skeleton Apple Cocktail, which was delicious. That's clever. That's cute. Um, It was a little pricey compared to some of the other places, so I spent about $33 in total for all of that, chips, guacamole, my shrimp taco bowl, and then the drink. But again, it was a holiday special, so on a regular, you probably won't spend as much. Looking at the menu, though, um, there were some things that stood out. So I think next time when I go, I'm going to order what they call the Diet Starts Tomorrow, (laughs) (laughs) which is a signature taco. Um, And it says it's got a healthy mix of all four street taco styles. (laughs) Yum. Um, (laughs) Like um, pulled chicken and steak. So that's right up my alley. And that's what I'll be ordering. Um, Again, recommendations for next time. Um, For any of you that want to go visit uh, Mas Por Favor is definitely make your reservation in advance and the keyword to get to the back um, hallway is tonight's delight what is tonight's delight and they will lead you back okay does it change or is it always that i don't know you have to check out the blog because like the mob <laughs> museum has their speakeasy and that changes all the time true so, true. so maybe it does so go change. to their website yeah, okay got the website we are always looking for new restaurants for us to try if you've got one send us a message at the perfect bite at ccculv.com we're always looking for new ideas Next up, we have a special guest on the podcast. As with every fifth episode, we like to interview an industry professional, and today we'll be interviewing Tiffany King from Ascensus. Tiffany, we're so happy to have you here on The Perfect Bite. We're going to do a little intro and share your background, and then we'll dive into some great questions. So Tiffany is here representing SSGA, You Promise 529, and Navigate, which is the Nevada State Treasurer's Office College Savings Division. She conducts 529 education savings seminars and outreach to state employers, community groups, and other local organizations. Tiffany is employed by a census, who is the program manager for the plan and not employed by the state of Nevada. So Tiffany, just to get started, please tell us what is a 529 plan so we can all be familiar. Perfect. Um, Thanks for having me. The 529, which actually the name itself comes from Section 529 of the IRS Code, um, is created to help families save for college in a tax-advantaged way. So it's an investment savings account where your investments will actually grow tax-deferred, and then your withdrawals as long as they are for eligible, qualified educational expenses for their designated beneficiary, it's going to be tax-free. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, Tiffany, I was at one of your presentations, and I've heard of all kinds of different college plans, but there were a lot of um, benefits for your plan that you talked about, the 529 plan. Can you share some of those benefits with our listeners? Sure. I remember that. Thank you. (laughs) Um, So obviously the tax benefit is the major benefit because it's the tax benefits that will potentially have you, um, your dollars go further, right? As opposed to putting your money in a taxable, comparable account. Um, But besides that, the 529 is so flexible. It's flexible in that anyone can basically have a 529 for just about anyone, right? So I can open an account for um, my kiddos, my grandkiddos, my nieces, my nephews. I have an account for my godson. Mm. Um, The great thing about that, his parents can also have an account for him as well um so you don't have to be related to the person like you by do blood? not have to be related oh, okay you do not so it could be for your neighbor's kid right wow um yeah right you can do it for me. <laughs> I'm all, i need to move next door to that person <laughs> to do that. Um, the money in the account though can be used at any eligible institution across the country or even some abroad um in state out of state public private um grad school med school law school, vocational schools, trade schools, right? Um, Not just for tuition either. It can be used for room and board, off-campus housing, um, computers, software. Like um, books too or anything? Textbooks, absolutely, absolutely textbooks. Um, Your funds can even be used for K-12 tuition um, and even student loan repayments um, for the designated beneficiary. I didn't know that. I thought it was just college. Yeah, Yeah, lots of flexibility, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
So what about students that are going to receive financial aid? Will that impact them if they have the 529 account? So super great question. Very valid concern, right? So most families rely on financial aid, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I do get this question a lot when I'm out at community fairs or employee benefit fairs and things like that. But most families rely on financial aid. So what you want to look at is there is a difference in financial aid, right? So financial aid could be scholarships, it could be grants, it could be work study, it could be student loans, mm-hmm. right? Um, but then also you want to look at it could be merit-based or it could be need-based, right? So merit-based is going to be like academic scholarships, athletic scholarships, athletic, okay. right? So those will not be limited with your 529 plan, right? But your needs-based financial aid potentially could be impacted by your 529. It really is just going to depend on who owns the 529 account and who's given the aid. So is is the aid coming from FAFSA? Is the aid coming from some other institution? Uh Um, So families can go to finaid.org to learn more about that. But all in all, the 529, the whole purpose to help reduce the amount of student loan debt that a family has to take Mm -hmm. on. Oh, that's really great. So scenario for you, let's um, say that I open an account for my daughter and she's three now, but let's just say, you know, when she turns 17, 18, she decides she doesn't want to go to college as I'm sure (laughs) plenty Mm -hmm. of parents have that experience. What happens to those monies? Like, do I have to find another kid that's going to college? Like she's, she's it for me. She's your youngest. (laughs) So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'm a parent. Right. I get it. Your plans for your daughter when she's three, you've got all these dreams for her. She turns 18 and they don't always coincide Mm -hmm. with what she wants to do. Right. So um, the great thing about the 529 plan is that you as the account owner, because your daughter would be the beneficiary, you as the account owner, you control where, when and how the money is used. Okay. Okay. So um, you have quite a few options. You can change the beneficiary, like you said, um, to an eligible member of the family that could just that could be you. That could be your spouse. Okay. Just an eligible member of the family. You can transfer beneficiary, no tax penalty, no, no clips about that. Okay. Or you can just let the money sit in the account. Maybe baby changes her mind. Okay. Okay. And it goes to college later. There's no age limit to when you have to take the money out. Okay. okay? So let the money sit there in the account. Or of course the option is the non-qualified withdrawal. So just take your money out. Okay. Um, But understand that a non-qualified withdrawal, much like if you were to take money out of my retirement account before retirement, I'm going to incur penalties, right? So your non-qualified withdrawal would incur a 10% penalty. You'd be subject to that normal tax rate, um, but only on the earnings portion of the account. Okay. Okay. So I would get back what I put in, just not what it has gained. It'll be the earnings portion of of the account, right? So whatever that would be at that point. But um, you have options. You're not out of your money. Cool. Good to know. That neighbor might be looking for something. <laughs> <laughs> it does appoint eligible family members. I, I can oh, just okay. go back myself. I like that one. Or that, absolutely. Sorry, yeah. Tiffany corrected me. That is not okay to do that. <laughs> that's really cool, though, because I think that that's a hesitancy I've had is what is the plan and how will that relate in, like, however many years down the road. So that's good to know. Mm-hmm. So I have another scenario for you, Tiffany. Okay. What if I have multiple family members, which would be such a blessing, if they want to all contribute to the future education of one of my children? Like, are they able to all contribute to the same account or do they have to make different accounts? How Very does that good work? Question. So this is a, a feature that I actually love about the 529. Third parties can contribute to your kid's account. Nice. Okay? Um, so the SSGA You Promise 529 makes it super easy to do that with what's called UGIFT. Okay, so when you open the account, um, you are provided a UGIFT code. UGIFT is a free service, makes it easy for other folks to contribute. They don't even have to be family members. Anyone can contribute. Um, When you open your account, you're given that UGIFT code. You can text it out, email it out. Um, They can go to um, the website and input that code, and they can contribute to the account. Super simple. I actually put my son's UGIFT code on my Facebook page um, and told family members at his birthday, like, give the gift of education, not like video oh, games and clothes, like right? That. And so they yeah. just literally just click on it. It takes them right to the site. They can contribute. More folks get in on mm-hmm. the fun because it takes a village, right? Yeah, that's so great. I, As a kid, my grandparents would put money into a bank account. But you know what? That was like earning like a penny <laughs> of interest all those years. I mean, it was nice. Obviously, they wanted to contribute. But that would have been so much better to say this is because actually the money was eventually used for school. Right. So that would have been earning the whole time. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. sending Very a text, cool. super easy. Oh, yeah. So the mobile app, you can send it directly from the mobile app. Oh, it's super easy. Yeah. A lot of times family members are like, you know, what do they need? And you're like, well, they're good. You know, they don't really yeah. need anything. But we still want to give something, which, again, that's just a wonderful they situation, today, right? They may need it later. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah sure. that you're right. They don't need another, like, 
mm-hmm. Nintendo Switch game. <laughs> no. Please don't. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tiffany, we, we do love scenarios. So here's another one for you. Okay. Let's just say, I don't know, 10 years down the line, I come into a financial emergency and I need funds. I, I don't have any money in my account. I can't get a loan for it. My credit is just not there. <laughs> Can I access the funds in the 529? Okay, and so this goes back to you as the account owner. Okay. Controlling where, when, how the money is used. Okay. okay? Um, you don't have to wait until they're 18. Okay. So you as the account owner, you need to pull the funds out. That's totally your right. You can pull it out for a financial emergency. One that's not a qualified educational expense for the designated beneficiary would be considered a non-qualified withdrawal. Okay. Right. So what we were talking about earlier, the earnings on those non-qualified withdrawals are subject to that federal um, income tax and that 10 percent federal penalty. OK, okay? Um, as well as any other state and local income taxes that are applicable. But it's your right. Do whatever you want. Awesome. I like that. Do what I want yeah. with my money. money. Yeah. With my money. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I don't see any downside to doing one of these and plans. No. I think this sounds like I'm going to look into this I, more. Yeah. If you have kids or you have somebody you want to support to go to college then yeah mm-hmm. get, get it started yeah yeah or trade that's or like you said high school even if there's uh, yes, a k-12 mm-hmm. tuition yeah yes. mm-hmm. that's awesome mm-hmm. well thank you so much tiffany this has given me a lot to think about i have four kids um crystal has five so between the two of us we're gonna you know fund the future of, yeah. <laughs> of education <laughs> let's get those going yes, yes. So we always like to have our guests answer two questions. Okay. So we're going to throw out the first one here. Okay. First, can you share with us a favorite locally owned restaurant that you'd like to go to? And what is your go-to item on the menu that you can recommend to our listeners? Okay, so this is probably one of the hardest questions you've asked today. <laughs> um, I love to go out to eat, drink with my friends. Uh, we're going out tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always so many different places to go. But I would have to choose probably something that's really close to my house um, and then something that we can eat any time of the day, which is breakfast. Yes. Mm. Um, so we go to a spot called Griddle Cakes. Um, oh, I know them. Yeah, I've heard yeah, of that. Yeah. I mm-hmm. love griddle, cook, griddle cakes. Um, so because I sometimes eat healthy, my go-to <laughs> item would be the uh, protein pancake uh, topped with bananas, cinnamon, pecans, and then, of course, you got to do the sugar-free syrup since I'm going to be healthy. Um, but <laughs> sugar-free <that's> always... syrup? <laughs> yeah. What's that? <laughs> Don't make fun of me, okay? That's that's my contribution to my uh, New Year's resolution. But um, So, yeah, griddle cakes would have to be my go-to. If you look on the back of a regular syrup, container you'll be blown away when you look at the sugar-free one i mean it's like oh okay. in a good way in a way. good way like okay. oh like okay. it's like it's like 200 <laughs> calories for like i don't know two tablespoons versus like really 10 i, I mean, thought you were gonna like be like is in no there. yeah <laughs> yeah i buy it too don't okay. don't worry yeah. I'm like, like those people that tell me don't do diet coke that's just as bad you know? <laughs> okay. Okay. okay no judgment here tiffany <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry <laughs> hey tiffany and our last question What is one personal financial tip that our listeners can implement right away and see improvements in their finances? So my son is currently a sophomore at a private university in California, Fight On USC. Mm -hmm. Um, So I know how it feels to receive tuition bills larger than my annual salary and wondering where are we going to get the money from, right? Yeah. So my tip to anyone is really that it's just better to have than to need. Um, So consider saving what you can, when you can. Um, and then to any parents out there, it's never too early or too late to save for college or for your kiddo's future, whatever mm-hmm. that may be. It's good advice. So thank you so much, Tiffany. If someone has more questions, how can they get a hold of you? And where can someone go to open up their College 529 account? Well, thanks, you guys. Uh, feel free to visit our website at nevadas529.com to learn more. You can open your accounts directly on the site or feel free to sign up for one of our webinars that's also posted on the website. Um, of course, if you'd like a one-on-one enrollment session or you just have a general question, please feel free to email me, tiffany.king at ascensus, that's A-S-C-E-N-S-U-S dot com. And I'd love to chat with you. Okay, We'll put a link in our show notes so people can get their pins out real quick and don't have to write that down. So, All right, well, now we'll take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $70 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. 
This year, we returned a $2.4 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, mortgages, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured. Next up is our future self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. We talked a lot about the College 529 account. So for your future college student, we're going to share a planning tool to help you achieve your college funding goals. With the census, they provide a free financial planner to let you know where you are on the college savings road and provide feedback on areas that you can improve. We'll include a link to the site in our show notes. So when I went onto the site, I was able to quickly enter my child's age, my income, anticipated income. Um, so if you're anticipating any kind of income increases, um, amount that you've saved for college and anticipated educational institution, whether that's going to be like a traditional school, community, private, public, you know, you get to mm-hmm. enter that in whatever you think your kid's going to do. Um, and then once I submitted it, it gave me a quick plan. So currently for my youngest child, it said that I am developing and I need work. <laughs> Which That's I would kind. Agree. <laughs> yes. You need work. And it was a bold. I ne- oh my you gosh, need you work. <laughs> yes. You need wow. Work. Okay. So, I'm going to check that out. <laughs> the results um, provided mm-hmm. a summary of um, her future finances and college affordability. It included total anticipated college net costs, student loan debt, and interest. Um, so it gave you like kind of like both the options. Like if you know whether you were going to save the funds yourself, this is how much you should be saving monthly to get that goal. If they were going to get student loans, this is the amount of debt that you can anticipate them getting. This is the kind of interest rate that you might anticipate seeing at that time Um, and it provided more details on the factors that were affecting my financial readiness score so maybe I needed to include more um, regular deposits to her savings Mm -hmm. college you know things like that so that's probably today's amounts right so if your child's young on what it'll be in the future so it gives you her graduation year and when she's anticipated to start going to college and what the rates should be in that year so with inflation, with yes, changes. Yes, okay, that's very cool. smart. <laughs> that's good. So uh, one of the things that stood out to me was the actual recommendation on what to contribute to. It didn't just say like save more. It actually gave me a dollar amount. Um, for me, it told me that I should start saving $230 monthly for her. Very um, specific. Yes, okay. very, very specific. And again, that was based on what I put in there. I think I said she was going to go to like a traditional college, um, four-year college, things like that. Um but yeah, mm-hmm. it'll, it'll customize specific to what you enter in there. A very cool tool, and I'll be sure to include it um, in our show notes. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was the perfect bite.